Welcome to another CBA Level 3 Grill Coaching Session. This session is the last in the series and looks at putting the various elements of the grill together. Looking at the frame, I've decided to create tenons that are a little longer than needed. And then I'm going to thread the top section of the tenon. Using washers as spacers, I can use a wing nut to hold the frame together. I prefer a wing nut because it's easier to undo with my fingers and I can assemble the pieces together inside of the screw together frame. Certainly pipe clamps or other such things would work well, but if you look at that gap under the frame, that gets to be an issue for me during the assembly. I like to use spacer blocks for the corners and the middle of the grill. This gives support to the scrolls while giving clearance for the wider water leaves. First things first, let's take the twists out of the frame. I'm showing here two pieces of angle iron. The angle iron in front has a wide V cut into it to allow for the rear piece to become the visual reference looking for straight. After taking a big picture look all over the length of the bar, I start working my way along the bar incrementally starting from the worst end. I use my eye or a yardstick to check for overall flat or straight of the bar after I've taken the twists out. Then I'm going to fit the frame together and I'm going to check for square. It doesn't take much to throw the frame out of square, even if all your pieces are straight and flat. Uh, a bent tenon or a misaligned mortise will throw the frame out of square very effectively. I'm advocating keeping all the scrolls separate rather than welding them together. I drill and then cut the tails off the scrolls to fit around a screw or a rivet later. I prefer a screw. Center style is to be drilled. Mine has been drilled to about 5 16th or accept a bolt. I mark the center of the hole on the top of the center style for convenience so I can transfer the center to the scrolls. I also number or letter each scroll in place uh, in such a position that it will be covered by the collar. Despite my best efforts, both the frame and the individual, individual scrolls will have some discrepancies making them basically an individual fit into the frame. And in an effort to keep the frustration to a manageable level, identifying each scroll and its place really does help. I'm using a square here to show the check for alignment of the upset corners when compared to the frame, but I tell you that's very scientific. What I'm making here is a visual piece. Uh, my thought is so long as the frame is within tolerance, and the internal fittings look right, then they are right. To that end, a little block of wood, as I'm showing here in this uh, bottom right, yeah, just cut that square and put it between the, the, um, the center style and the upset corners, and that'll be just fine as a guide. In this case, after positioning the corners to where I like them, so you can see I'm parallel here, you can see this gap has opened up between the bottom of the scroll and the center style, so I'm going to have to tweak that bottom portion of the scroll. And as I look at this, the north-south orientation of the corners looks reasonable. It might not be perfect, but it's going to work. I put a clamp on the center um, style there, holding the tail of the scroll in place, and you can see that it has lifted this portion of the scroll out of place. So I need to go back in and remove any twists in the scroll and then reassert. If you're adjusting the scrolls, that if you've got tight fitting forks and um, tight fitting uh, horns here and you are tight in the place, you're going to get very tight bends, which can also be viewed as kinks. So my preference is to have a slightly larger distance between the horns and the wrench and a slightly longer distance and that way I get a more gradual tweak if I need to do something. <clears throat> I put a square across here just to check for uh, visual alignment. I don't care where it is academically, I want to make sure it's good visually. And that looks okay apart from my leaves are uh, pointing out into the middle of the style. I prefer that they dropped a little more vertically, so I need to tweak those before I carry on. And it looks like I've also got a little um, bend there in my scroll, so I need to get rid of that. Once I've got everything where I like it, then I'm going to transfer from the top of the hole 
uh, a measurement across to each scroll individually. Once I've got that transferred, I'm going to run a scribe down the inside, center punch this, and then I'm going to either letter or number each place for identification. I'm showing here a piece of channel, and that's going to support uh, a curved piece of metal rather than a flat drill press, um, and that helps me on the drill table. If you're drilling with a hand drill device, then no, no big issue. Bolting the scroll to the frame now is going to reveal any <clears throat> excuse me, residual twists that you've got present in the scroll that you might not have noticed earlier. These need to go away. It's not worth carrying on with a bent scroll. It's just going to tweak your frame, or it has the potential to tweak your frame. With the bolt in place and any twists removed, etc., so now you've got the perfect scroll, mark the point where the scroll touches the frame. I'm showing a line drawn across both, but you could equally just draw the one on the scroll, drill that, and then come back in and offer up that measurement to the outside. What's important for me here is that this spacer block is away from that touch point, so you're not looking at this sort of muddy view here, you're actually seeing the point where the scroll is touching the frame. I'm going to use a number 10 by 24 bolt. Uh, and I'm drilling for a tap with a number 25 drill, 532 if you don't have a set of number drills. The channel supports both sides of the scroll, again helping me drill um, a curved piece. And you can see that because I'm working on the side of the table, this is going to stop the piece from turning in my hand as I drill. So I can just hand hold that. Uh, that goes a long way to preventing broken drill bits. And then typically you've got that mark that you placed on your scroll so you know how to align the tap to what is basically vertical or certainly perpendicular to that portion of the scroll. And then I just tap uh, ready to receive my bolt. Once I've drilled and tapped, I'm going to come back in. This is my 5 16th hole and I'm going to cut here and I'm actually cutting on the halfway mark, which means I'm going to have a little less than half of the hole left and that goes a long way to helping you fit the two scrolls together in that side of the grill. I give the scrolls a 24 hour bath in vinegar to remove any residual flux and scale etc. And for ease of handling I like to wax them after they come out of the bath or otherwise finish the scrolls whatever it is prior to screwing or riveting them together. It's a reasonably easy task to come back and touch up any weak spots later on in the process. Let's have a look at a little video here and then we can get going um, with the rest of the show. I cannot emphasize enough that to number or letter the various parts goes a long way to removing the frustration when you're assembling this grill. Take the time to mark the part. My scrolls are screwed to the frame with countersunk machine bolts. 
This saves me from having to create a bucking bar or something similar to head over or support the inside of the, uh, the rivet in the scroll as I'm trying to head over a rivet from the outside. The mass of scrolls at the center of the grill will also receive some form of uh, countersunk bob. Drill the outer frame and countersink if you're going to screw the internal elements to the frame. If you opt to rivet the pieces together, you're going to need that bucking bar, which is basically an offset support that will fit inside the scroll and support the head of the rivet. So your bucking bar is going to go in inside here as you work on the outside of the, the rivet here. I feel that there are a lot of advantages to using the screwing together of parts. So that's my recommendation. Make any adjustments to the leaves, etc., that you think are necessary. Again, my right hand leaf here could just use a little more tweaking, and then I think I'm ready to go. For the beveled C scrolls, I'm going to drill those to two different sized holes one for a clearance fit of my 516 bolt, and one for a tap size. So I'm going to put some threads in the other, the other C scroll for the uh, bolt. That way, I'm going to avoid having to put a nut or something there. Leave one scroll slightly open. I'm going to finish one, I'm going to leave one open. I'm going to put my countersunk hole in the one that I leave open. Uh, I'm using a 5 16th by 18 thread um, countersunk uh, machine screw. I would prefer a fine thread because I find it's a little easier to work with, but I couldn't find that at my local store. I could get a grade 8, but I need to cut this and file it, so grade 8 wasn't going to work for me. The issue here is that when you complete this um, bend, this scroll up, this um, hole is going to be misshapen. So make sure you either drill a little deeper or you take a little bit off the, um, the countersunk head to accept or to fit into that misshapen hole. And then the last thing for me when I'm uh, trying to get these things together is I have a little scroll form and that really helps me find center on this scroll. Otherwise, you can be chasing these C-scrolls around for an age. On the other C-scroll, you can see that that is fully formed <clears throat> or turned. And then I'm going to drill for a tap size for my 5 16th bolt. And I think that's an F-size drill for me, a uh, quarter inch if you don't have that sort of uh, drill index. And again, I'm relying on the line that you can't see. It's on the other side to align my tap so I know where a perpendicular is to that portion of the scroll. And then I'm just going to tap that for my 5 16 by 18, as you can see there, bolt. And then I've got my countersunk head in here. I've uh, got my 5 16 by 18. This portion has the, the threads in it. So basically, I just screw that on like a nut and then tighten this up. A couple of things going on here. Uh, one is I'm testing the fit of my forged collar and that's not looking too bad. But I'm really not liking this fit of this particular scroll. You can see it's kicking out this um, C-scroll or that end of the C-scroll out a little bit. So I'm actually going to take everything apart and I'm just going to dress that little bit, probably on the back side, with a file and bring that back into more of a, a close fit. What I'm showing here is a simple tool to support the pin collar from underneath, so you're not going to damage the tenons or when you turn it over, the rivet heads on the other side. Trim the ends of the tenon to suit the type of head that you're going to need for your rivet, from dome to flush, they're all appropriate. You probably need a handheld set tool, which is just a, a small square ended tool to get those rivets down so that you're not dinging this bead with your hand hammer. This is as far as I'm going to go with this particular collar. I intend to fit the forage collar to my grill. I'm going to show fitting at the forage collar. Um, I do adjust that end of the scroll before I make the forage collar. Look for the shiny spot during the video. Um, but other than that, this is the final assembly of the frame.
This video marks the end of the grill coating sessions. There are some articles out there within the various affiliate groups, etc. <coughs> Excuse me. And I hope to have a booklet uh, sometime this year as an instructional guide. So good luck with your grill.